We got two mini splits installed last summer because they give us air conditioning and they're also quite efficient at heating. But I'm curious, how much more efficient are they than just plain old electric heating? And just to observe how this thing is doing, I've got a couple of temperature sensors where it sucks in the air, another one where it blows out the air, plus a homemade anemometer to gauge how much it's blowing. I also added sensors to the outside unit. There's one here, another one inside, one for ambient and then one on the back where it sucks it in and I put those sensors on back in December before we had snow it was way easier then now subjectively uh, the air blowing out of this thing doesn't feel any colder than ambient outside air so is it really taking heat from the outside and pumping it in or is this whole thing just a sham but I have been reading the uh, power meter every day last year as well as this year and our electricity use is substantially less this year than it was last year for the same outside temperature, so it's definitely doing something. But the outside unit moves a lot more air than the inside unit, and from my measurements, it's only two degrees cooler coming out, which is hard to be sure because you also feel the wind effect, so expect it to be cooler anyways. Plus, the compressor in this unit uses a substantial amount of energy, which of course all turns into heat eventually, which gets pumped to the inside as well. Now the mini splits were working really well all through the fall, but then when things got around freezing, this happened. The temperature is well above zero right now, three degrees Celsius, but this thing is all iced up and it wouldn't be iced up if it wasn't iced up, so to say, because if there's air flowing through here, this part wouldn't get cold enough to actually freeze on there. But because there's no air going through, because it's completely iced up, it basically gets cold because it's not getting any air through it. Now this thing is supposed to defrost itself once the outside coils get all iced up. I wasn't sure why I wasn't doing that, so I just set it to maximum air conditioning to warm up the outside coil and melt the ice off. And we got cold air coming out of this now because I reversed it. Okay, compressor has just started on this thing, so it should be pumping heat outside now and cooling the inside. I can see some of the ice is starting to melt off the coils on the inside. And this is becoming more transparent now. Yeah, this is melting. Lots of water dribbling out. This is starting to melt. More water running down. And most of the ice is gone by now. And it's starting to turn on the fan. I don't really want that, so I think this is enough de-iced. I'll just uh, turn it back into heating, because now we're just throwing away heat. But surprisingly, the performance of the unit in terms of heat output per energy used before and after that defrost wasn't that much different. So I think what happens is even if these coils are completely blocked up with ice, the centrifugal force of the fan and such makes it much more effective around the edges to blow air out, and of course air has to come in, comes in at the middle of the fan where the blades are moving slowly and basically going past the coils and it's extracting heat that way. Not nearly as effective as uh, sucking air through, but still getting some heat from the outside. Now, since then, the weather's been colder, and so defrosts are quite regular, and the unit does defrost on its own. It just defrosts much later than I thought it would, and possibly that's because it still works when it's caked up with ice, just not as well. And the defrost is using up quite a lot of energy that all basically gets left outside, so perhaps it makes sense to defrost as late as possible. But uh, it seems to be worst with uh, temperatures around zero because the air can hold a lot more humidity, especially if it's like foggy or snowy. Um, in fact, in a heavy snowfall, the unit has to defrost itself every hour just from all the snow that gets sucked in. Um, other times, typically two or three defrost cycles a day is normal. But uh, if it's a minus 10, a crisp and sunny day, at that point, the relative humidity is lower and the amount of cooling that it does to the air won't result in condensation. So at that point, it works really well. And the way the defrost works on this thing is essentially what I did, which is it switches to AC, except it turns off the fan, but my temperature sensor that's right below the coils right there will actually go down to minus 20 because there's no heat going into the coils. So it just runs really inefficiently to generate heat to warm up the outside coils. I think it would actually defrost more efficiently if it ran the fan while it's in AC mode to essentially borrow some heat from the inside, which it could replace more efficiently than just to use all electric heat essentially to defrost. 
but I think most customers would have considered that defective if you got the thing turned to heat and it blasts ice cold air at you periodically. I've been monitoring the power consumption for our mini splits for three months now, so let's look at the data to see how they did. This is my graph for last winter. The white line is the prediction of how many kilowatt hours we'd use each day based on outside temperatures, and the blue line is the actual power consumption, and those follow fairly closely except for where it's grayed out and the reason that's grayed out is because we turned on our oil furnace for part of the winter which of course is heating that doesn't come from electricity scrolling down this is this winter so far and you can see the prediction based on the previous winter is much higher than our actual power consumption so the mini splits are helping quite a lot and my predictive model works fairly well because even though we use a lot of non-heating electricity in the house all that energy ends up heating the house eventually except for using the dryer and laundry to some extent because the hot water just goes down the drain. But I've been measuring that separately using this little Raspberry Pi computer up here which is hooked up to a bunch of temperature sensors that are taped to the wires going to the dryer and to the hot water heater. And I've been using that data to help predict how much power we'd use as a function of temperature. Now I've recently also installed this gadget up here to measure the uh, power on various circuits, but uh, I don't have data from that for last winter, so I can't use it for this. And going back to last year's data versus this year's data, we haven't been using the oil at all so far, and you can see here, this is before we needed to turn the heat on, and we're basically using about 40 kilowatt hours per day just on various other things, and then once the heat turns on, um, power consumption of course goes up, but not in proportion as I expected based on my temperature model from last year. This graph is for just this winter so far, and the green line is how many kilowatt hours we saved compared to my prediction, and the red line is how many kilowatt hours the mini split actually used. So you can see on average the mini split uses about as many kilowatt hours as we save, which is to say it puts out about twice as much heat as a regular electric heater would for the same amount of energy. Now there is some missing data here in terms of how much the mini split used. And that's because for a period there in January, I had the uh, utility meter readings that I take every day and my Emporia gadget that measures the circuits disagree quite a bit, so I can't trust it here. There was a power failure right here and I think that just threw it for a fit for over a week. It's always good to at least verify how well the instrumentation is working, and in this case, not always all that well. But other than that period here, the overall rating from the Emporia gadget and the utility meters agreed fairly well, so I'll trust this numbers for the individual circuits for those periods as well. Now I should also add, in terms of this graph, um, this is actually putting the mini split at a disadvantage because this winter we need a whole house a degree or two warmer than we did last winter because the mini splits don't put the heat exactly where we want it when we want it, so we just heat the house up a bit warmer so that we get enough heat where we want it. Next graph is how many kilowatt hours we save per day versus the average outside temperatures. So at uh, 10 degrees, we're not really saving anything. But then if we go to zero degrees, we're saving, and then minus five average temperature is saving more. And it didn't really get that cold, so I don't have anything for really cold, but it seems that the savings still go up as the temperature goes down. Now I expect that trend of increased savings as the temperature drops to reverse itself if we say hit minus 20 daily average temperature, but it very rarely gets that cold here, and it certainly hasn't gotten that cold this winter yet. Now going back to here, I know how many kilowatt hours it should have taken of electric heat to get the house warm given the outside temperature, and I know how much power the mini split used, and from that I can work out sort of a coefficient of performance, and that's this graph here. And I plot that as a function of outside temperature, and for what we've got here, there doesn't seem to be any correlation of coefficient of performance and outside temperature. Now, that seems counterintuitive that it doesn't work any better when it's warmer than when it's cold, but uh, one thing that really hits the performance of this thing is it has to periodically defrost if it ices up. And for instance, when it snows, a lot of snow gets sucked into the mini split and then it has to defrost itself to get rid of that snow so that the air can flow again. And whenever it defrosts, that basically means heating up the outside coils using electricity, and that is electricity that isn't used to heat up the house, so it's kind of a waste of energy, but necessary. And when it's very cold, usually those are very crisp cold days with low relative humidity, which means fewer defrost cycles, 
Whereas if it's around zero, often the air is quite damp. And even if it isn't snowing, those quilts just ice up a lot faster when it's around zero degrees than it does when it's minus 10. And just yesterday, my calculated coefficient of performance was only 1.3, which is the worst I've seen so far. And the outside temperature was just minus 2.2, so just below freezing. But we had quite a lot of snowfall yesterday. It was pretty much snowing all day and pretty good. And looking at a graph of indoor temperature in the house, um, this is yesterday here. And this is for the main living area. And every time that temperature spikes down is because the mini split stopped heating because it had to defrost itself. And it had to defrost itself 12 times yesterday. And so I graphed the calculated coefficient of performance as a function of relative humidity average for that day. And you can see when the humidity is low, my calculated coefficient of performance is pretty good. But as it gets higher, it tends to drop a little bit or at least all over the place. And we had quite a few days at 100% relative humidity. Those are snowfall days. And if anything, the average here is quite a bit lower than it is here. Overall, on average, I think those mini splits heat with about half as much electricity as conventional electric heaters would. And with electricity being relatively cheap here and natural gas expensive, that makes it the most cost effective heating option here in New Brunswick. That is, as long as they don't break, because regular electric heaters never break. But they're also an air conditioning system, and an air conditioning system that pays for itself, uh, that's pretty good.